good weekend. I wrap in with your weekend edition or your financial market wrap up. And this wrap up is for a melt up week, right? Isn't that what you'd call it? Uh, March 1st, 20. 24. So yeah, that's basically what's going on. The market has absorbed a heck of a lot of news. The stock market tried about three, four days of consolidation, took off again to the upside, and it really hasn't stopped since then. How high? Well, remember, most of the, most of the recommendations were that you would go to 5,200 in the S&P for the year or end up there. You're at 5,146. What are you going to do for an encore? Now you'll start talking 5,400. And that's how this works, until you're beyond expectations, and that's where the problems will set in with the market. It's only March 1st. You got a long way to go to the end of the year. Uh, you know, some people will say it's going to 6,000. Okay, whatever the number is. You know, I'm a chartist. Do I care? I don't. You know, I don't care if it's going up or down, if I can catch some of the plays. That's the idea here. The metal markets came alive too. You know, gold market up $41 today. That's not a little bit of a move. That's a heck of a move. And I think the currencies are at key tipping points. Are they going to see the dollar break down now and they take off? You know, we're going to hear from a lot of central banks. There are some CPI numbers that came out showing some weakness, and that's what you want to see in Europe. Uh, do I think that they're ready to move right away? I don't think any of the central bankers the major ones are ready to move in the month of March. They could move by May, June. Yeah, I, I, can, I can understand that if the economic data shows that they're going in the right direction and the inflation is falling. We'll see. All right. When you look at the S&P, so far for the month, day one of the new month, come on, up 0.83%. For the week, you were up 0.87%. And look, this market is just gone. I really can't call on the weekly chart that you've had consolidation. I can say it on the daily chart a lot easier, but not on the weekly. On the weekly, you're just basically making higher highs each and every week. This began back here at the beginning of the year, and it really hasn't stopped in the S&P. You've got higher lows, higher highs. The market's running. Where's the Bollinger Band? It's higher at 52.28. It only hit it at the end of the year, so there's room for it to run if that's the uh, excuse me if that's the number it wants to run to. And as long as this momentum stays up, and I, I keep teaching you that this is my best friend in the market. When it, once you learn how to work with the slow stochastic and Bollinger Bands, you have a game plan. And and the game plan is still, until the red line closes under 79, the odds favor still higher prices. That's what the marketplace is basically doing. When you come to the down, not quite a new high this week, a more of a stall. Wouldn't you agree? You see how this market's not making necessarily those higher highs? That's a little more constructive than the S&P, which is just one-sided in the market. Again, if you start seeing that red line's headed under 79, be careful. You're going to get then, I think, the correction back to wherever the 18-week average of closes are. Even the NASDAQ has joined the parade. New highs. Why not go for the upper Bollinger Band? And the Russell will be dragged with everybody doing the same thing. So you're watching the markets go. They're hard to get into. Because where do you put stops and you're worried of getting hurt there? I'll be honest, the ETFs and the individual stocks have been easier picks than the futures market right now. I rarely say that, but that's where, that's where I've been deploying everything for the past, since Wednesday. Okay, it doesn't sound like Fargo. Remember, I look at the markets every day, unlike so many other people. And Tuesday was the last day I saw it in the futures. And uh, for those of you that do follow me in the morning subscriber, you had been short meal, you're gone. You've been short the end, you got out of that. And uh, now I'm sitting there waiting for the new plays. I didn't have any, but trade after trade's been happening in the Spider ETF videos. In the five-year notes, battleground. Right here, 18 week average of closes, no trend. Markets lost a bit of momentum to the downside. When you go to the 10 year note, it's the same battle, same identical way. Markets sort of stalling out now with higher rates. 
in the dollar index, warning sign. If this market gets under 103.11 and a half and doesn't take out these highs, be the first sign of a top has formed in the dollar and you open the door up to go back to 101. The market, if it's going to go up, has to crack through this 100-week average and it just hasn't been able to do it. If the um, euro currency can get over 108.99 and close over that number, you'd then have higher lows, higher highs. You open the uptrend, and wherever that Bollinger Band is, you got the uh, potential for it. And again, it hasn't been able to break down to the lower band or the 100-week average of closes. In the Canadian dollar, the trend is down up until, on my work at least, the market takes out this number right here. This was last week's uh, high was 74.43. So unless and until that's taken out, still in a downtrend in that particular market. Now the yen is oversold and on the daily chart, it lost its bearish embedded reading. I'd be very cautious. If this market decides to bounce the 68.33 uh, level, and from where you're at right now, that's a good size rally from 66.78, is a possibility. You'd have to re-embed the reading Monday. In other words, break the end down hard for it to re-embed. Difficulty. Then in Bitcoin, runway to the upside. Breakout, as you can see. Overbought, yes. Would I tell clients to buy over a Bollinger Band? Absolutely not. Does the market generally pull back within them? 95% of the time. So the band's going to go up, price can go up, but it, it'll slide back in and you take another look. What we know is going on here is pretty simple. They're going to have the amount of Bitcoins, all right? That's going to happen in April. New money has come about where the ETFs have made it easy for people to put a portion of their portfolios into these and just close their eyes and say, well, I own some and that's it. And I think that's the mentality that is going on in the marketplace. Nothing wrong with it. So I'm not criticizing it. It has made it, once the SEC approved it, game ended. It's an asset class. When you come to the WTI crude, you're back down to these things narrowing in again one more time. And as you can see, Maybe you go up, but you got a lot of resistance starting 83.55 to 85.39. I'd be very cautious about getting too bullish in a market that is already in overbought territory. Same in WTI crude. I'm not bearish, but it's dangerous to buy overbought markets and over Bollinger Bands. I let other people do it. That's not the game plan that I like. I thought I had switched to... Uh, unfortunately, the gasoline, but I hadn't. We'll just finish this up. I had done it on one of the other charts. This market is void of doing anything. I, the interest is being lost in the heating oil. It's moved to the gasoline. But on pullbacks is where you want to come in. This is still only March 1st. These markets have a way of getting ahead of themselves, giving sharp corrections. And just when you're stopping yourself out is where you want to be buying into them. So you got to be very, very cautious. Again, remember what I was saying to you. If you're interested in the free offers that we have, move your cursor to the uh, top here. You can also go to irapstein.com, free offers. And there's so much. My research is there. My morning videos are there. The Lynn research is here. Our charting software is here. Our handheld app is there. There's just galore of all the brochures and everything. Give yourself a look at it. Fill out the form. We'll get it to you next week. You have a good day.